Figure 1 shows a sketch of the curve with the equation y equals e to the power x times the square root of sine x between 0 and pi. The finite region r is shown shaded in figure 1 and is bounded by the curve and the x-axis. Part A. Complete the table below with the tables of y corresponding to x is pi over 4 and x is pi over 2, giving your answers to five decimal places. So, if I first substitute pi over 4 into my function, so using my calculator, I'm going to do e to the power pi over 4 multiplied by the square root of sine pi over 4. And I get 1.84432 to five decimal places. I'm now going to substitute the pi over 2 into my function here. And here, so e to the power pi over 2 multiplied by the square root of sine pi over 2. And that gives me 4.1, uh, sorry, 4.81048 to five decimal places. So that's part A then. Part B, use the trapezium rule with all of the values of y in the table to obtain an estimate for the area of region R. So the trapezium rule is half h, the first y value plus the last y value plus two lots of everything in between. In this case, the height is pi over 4. We are going up in pi over 4s here. The width of each strip is pi over 4. The first value is 0. The last value is 0. And then we have two lots of everything in between. So two lots of the 1.84432. The 4.81048 and the 8.87207. And if I substitute that into my calculator, I find to four decimal places that the area is 12.1948. So that's my answer for part B. We're then told that the curve has a maximum turning point at point Q. And we need to find the X coordinate of Q. So I know at this point that the gradient is equal to zero. So I want to differentiate my function. The function e to the power X times the square root of sine X. Because I'm gonna be differentiating it, I'm gonna rewrite the square root of sine X as sine X to the power of a half. Now, I notice that this is a product of two functions. We've got the e to the power x, and we've got the sine x to the power of a half. So therefore, I need to use the product rule. So I'm going to let u be e to the power x, and I'm going to let v be sine x to the power of a half. Differentiating my u function, differentiating e to the power of x, I'll get e to the power of x. Differentiating the v, we're going to have to use the chain rule for this because we've got the sine x inside the function of the square root, the power of half function. So differentiating the outside function first, so differentiating the power of half, I'll get half sine x to the power of minus one half. So that's just multiplying by the half and then taking one away from the power. I then have to multiply that by the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of sine is cos. Right, so let's now apply the product rule, which is u dash times v. Plus v dash times u.
And this is going to need to equal zero for my stationary point. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is the equation I'm going to solve. First thing I'm going to do is multiply through by two so I can get rid of this half fraction. So I'll get two e to the x sine x to the half plus e to the x sine x to the minus a half cos x equals zero. Next, I'm going to factorise out the e to the power x. So factorising out the e to the power x, I've got two lots of the sine x to the power of a half plus the sine x to the power of minus a half times cos x equals zero. Now, I know for a fact that this can't equal zero, so I don't need to worry about that. The only thing that can equal zero is this. So underneath, let me write down 2 sine x to the power of a half plus uh, sine x to the power of minus a half cos x is equal to 0. Now, the next thing that I don't particularly like about this is this awkward negative power here. So I'm going to put that back on the denominator. So I'm going to rewrite this as cos x over sine x to the power of a half. So all I'm doing there is I'm saying that this is exactly the same as this. And now I can see that my method is going to be to multiply through by the sine x to the power of a half to get rid of that off the bottom. So I'm going to have two lots of the sine x to the power of a half multiplied by sine x to the power of a half. So adding those powers together, sine x to the power of a half times sine x to the power of a half will be sine x to the power of one, or just sine x. The fraction is gone now. And on the right hand side, the zero times sine x to the power of a half is zero. Now I can divide through by cos, and I'll get 2 tan x plus 1 equals 0. So tan x equals minus 1 half. I'll now do tan inverse of minus 1 half, which on my calculator gives minus 0.4636. Now, obviously, the x coordinate here is not negative. So let me draw a quick tan graph to find the other solutions to this equation. my tan graph. The minus one half, I got this solution here. This is the answer my calculator gave me. This is the minus 0 0.4636. So this, these uh, other solutions would be here or here. So this is going to be minus 0 0.4636 and so is this. So for this solution here, I'm going to do pi minus the 0 0.4636, which gives as my answer 2.68 to two decimal places. And this is the x coordinate of that first turning point. So that's the only answer that's going to be between 0 and pi. I don't need to worry about this other answer. That's going to be above pi. So let's not worry about that. Um, so 2.68 is the answer to pi c.